Adventures of Furry Man. Today we're dealing with a jungle devil, whatever that is. <laughs> It shouldn't be too difficult, just sneak up on his blind side. A little Sam Fisher action should take care of him. If that's the jungle devil, I understand why so many guys find the devil attractive. They're gone. Now's our chance. Ralph, there are no guards on the trail. Now we've got a chance to get away. It's no use, Gloria. They'll follow us and capture us again. Maybe one of them is the jungle devil? The white guy says, we've been missing for some time now, so you can bet there are search parties out looking for us. The way you're secluded down here, I don't give the average search party strong odds of success. So you're just going to sit here and wait for those savages to cook us in a pot? The picture of the uncivilized savage who nevertheless knows how to make an iron cooking pot big enough to hold multiple humans was a staple of movies and TV. It was usually Africans, which is to say black people, who were so depicted. But the guy in the hat has a Hispanic accent, so I'm not sure where we are. He says, in three days the moon will be full and then they kill us. Why? If only we could recover the diamond and put it back in the eye of their idol. It's lost. It's lost in the quicksands. I dropped it accidentally when those natives surprised me. I wasn't going to steal it. Just, just look at it. And I had to take it out of the idol to look at it. I'm a two-year-old. I look with my hands. Thing is, there's a quicksand pool right next to the idol. She took it out and dropped it in the pool. What did you expect the locals to think? Right now in the U.S. we're hearing a lot about white privilege, systemic racism, and similar ideas. We're seeing those ideas in action here. These people came blundering into the rainforest looking for some exotic plants that white guy wants to study. They wander into the people's home, which is to say their village, and start pawing at things that don't belong to them. You can bet she didn't ask before she picked up that diamond because she's a scientist. They should know she means no harm. What she means is, possibly without even realizing it, that she's white and quote-unquote civilized, so she's obviously better than these dark barbarians, so she should be allowed to poke around wherever she wants. When the residents take exception to that, they're savages who want to cook her in a pot. It's gone. And with it, we've lost our last chance of making friends of these people. But at least you can make nourishment for them. This is Zanaya, Jim. 10,000 miles of unexplored jungle. Jaguars, snakes, deadly insects, and the Zanayans themselves. We don't want any part of anyone from the outside. Jaguars. Excuse me, Jaguars. That narrows the location down to the Americas, probably some part of the Amazon rainforest in South America, since we have precious few jungles north of Mexico. After an 11-second establishing shot of the Daily Planet building as if we've never seen it before, we learn that Clark Kent is going down to Zanaya to find the missing scientist and his wife. To Clark's dismay, he finds out that Perry is sending Lois along, too. Jimmy wants to join the party, but Clark says no. Poor Jimmy. I never did like long farewells, so I'll say goodbye now. I have a feeling it's not so much goodbye as see you soon. That young, agile mind is cooking up something, and we all know what it is. Oh, who are you looking for, kid? Oh, it's all right. I'm from the Daily Planet. I was just checking to see if you're all set for the takeoff. Well, I'm not yet, but I will be. Hey, keep an eye on things around here while I run over to the hangar, huh? Sure, take your time. I know airport security has reached insane proportions since we all lost our collective minds after 9-11 and handed a bunch of our freedoms over to a bunch of thugs, but scenes like this make me wonder if maybe it didn't used to be a little too much the other way. He hides in the cargo bay at the back of the plane until they're well on their way and nobody can kick him off. Clark is frustrated, but he's stuck with him. Now let's see the white man's depiction of the South American indigenous tribes. I don't know that much about it, but a lot of those props they're waving around look African to me. 
and the whooping sounds like they're a bunch of engines getting ready to attack John Wayne at Fort Gunnawin. They'll do that all night to scare away the jungle devil. Jungle devil? Everyone is afraid of jungle devil. Big as a man. Big teeth. Arms, they can break a man in two. And when he roars, the ground shakes. He sounds like a Sasquatch. He's on the right set of continents for it, but I've never heard of any reported sightings in South America. On the other hand, it was a lot easier to cross the border in those days. The plane is over the jungle where the Harpers disappeared. Clark convinces the pilot to scout around for a couple of hours before heading on to his designated airport. Uh, the tops of some of those areas are 80 feet high and it's solid foliage clear to the ground. I'm not sure what he expects to see. Well, let me rephrase that. I'm not sure what he expects Lois or Jimmy to be able to see. He'll slip back to that cargo bay where Jimmy was and search his own way. Look, the guards. Shh, I hear something. Sounds like a plane. It wasn't a plane. It was just Superman going... There was something up there, but it wasn't like any plane I ever saw before. Maybe just a bosser. No, no bird of any kind. But this, this thing, whatever it was, seemed to hover over the clearing and then shot away like a rocket. So it was a rocket bird plane then. Superman seems to have their location pinpointed. He gets back to the plane just as the pilot reports engine trouble and has to cut the search short. It's bad enough that they're not going to make the airport, but Clark saw a clearing a ways back and directs the pilot to it. It's not far from where our little band of scientists is being held. Gee, thanks for lending me the booth. You'll need them, kid. We'll need two motors to get out of here. Think you can fix them? I'll do the best I can. Here you are. Oh, no thanks. I don't abuse them. Afraid of guns, Mr. Kent? I'll take it, Bill. Hey, do you know how to use that thing? Sure, I want two Cupid dolls in the shooting gallery. Shooting galleries use 22 rifles with undersized powder loads. I don't think that prepares you for the recoil of a hunting rifle. But it's also possible Lois is an accomplished big game hunter. She tends not to tell anybody certain things. And besides, Clark, you never know when you might run into one of those jaguars. You know what? How do you pronounce that word? I heard it jaguar all my life until I watched Godzilla vs. Megalon the first time. When I heard that guy call the robot Jet Jaguar, I thought it was a translation or dubbing thing. Then I heard Clark and a few other people say it that way. I'm wondering if it's a regional thing in the U.S. or what the story is. So which is it for you, Jaguar or Jaguar? I'll try to put a poll up. I can't guarantee it'll work, but I'll do my best. But also tell me in the comments. I'm curious. <laughs> Let's show them we can die like Americans. Set that thing away. Let's live like Americans. We're friends. Amigos. He said they don't want any contact with outsiders. Why would he assume they understand English or Spanish? Dr. Harper, Mrs. Harper, my name is Clark Kent. This is Miss Lane, Mr. Olson. Clark explains that the Zanayans have also captured them. Then the chief and the witch doctor go through some gyrations. Chief say that because you will eye of idol gone. One of the strangers must die. Others must leave land of Zanayan, never come back. You mean they're asking for only one sacrifice? He also says they have to decide which one. Jimmy's the stowaway, so he seems like a logical choice. Clark comes up with a way. Five white pebbles and one black pebble in a hat. Black pebble goes. Gee, I wonder who'll get it. Maybe the guy with x-ray vision who can see which pebble is which? He notices something while he's gathering pebbles. Hey, is this cold? Yes, I've run onto a little of it around here. Coal, carbon. Put it under a million tons of pressure for a thousand years and you've got a diamond. <laughs> How we could use a diamond. I wonder if that's going to give Clark any ideas. Bingo. They didn't understand friend, but they understand bingo. I'm glad the Harpers have been teaching them the really important words. They take Clark away and we get a bunch more stereotypical carryings on while we wait for the jungle devil. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Boy, that witch doctor is good. Now change him back. Except there's no time for that. The jungle devil is here. Time for everyone except Superman to be somewhere else. <laughs> Apparently it is a Sasquatch, because if that's supposed to be a gorilla, it has a plethora of genetic anomalies. Not the least of which is being on the wrong continent. Gorillas aren't known for using weapons like clubs and rocks either, so there's no telling what this thing is supposed to be. <laughs> what he is right now is gone and the chief is safe from him. Clark just saved his life. And he's not done. The chief says, because Kent is a mighty warrior who chased the jungle devil away, everyone's lives are spared. But they all have to leave and never come back because of losing the idol's eye. Clark says, how about letting me search that pool for it? Not only does he have the strength to make that happen, he has the finesse to make it come out perfectly faceted and cut, just the right size to replace the missing one in the idol. Is there no end to his amazing abilities? He pretends to search the pool and find it and puts it back in the idol. <laughs> Doesn't it look thrilled to have its eye back? Great. Now I have to watch these clowns with two eyes. It was nice while it lasted. Incidentally, Clark told the Harpers that the Jungle Devil was a gorilla that escaped from a circus and took to the wild. How he came up with that is anybody's guess, but just go with it. I've said all I'm going to about the obvious problems with this episode. Instead, let's talk about the plot. We have two issues, the missing diamond and the Jungle Devil. We drag things out for 20 minutes, then in the last four, Superman pops in, snaps his fingers, and everything is fixed. The show reached a point where it got a little stuck in that rut. We're starting to see hints of that. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching, kids. And remember, clicking that like button is cool. Subscribing is even cooler. Leaving a comment is as cool as the coolest person you know. And becoming a patron makes you almost just like Superman. So don't hesitate. Do it today. Until next time. He'll slip back to that cargo bay where Jimmy was and search the plane. No, no, search. Oh, man, I had it, too. It's bad enough that they're not going to make the airport, but Clark saw it's bad enough that, okay, it's bad enough. There's an outtake for me.